Good morning. I'm Steve Levin with the MedTech Strategist, and I'm pleased to be here today with Dr. Bernard Pendergrass. We're going to talk about another successful Innovators Day here at EuroPCR. Bernard, always good to see you good and appreciate you. all the effort that went into the program. Talk a little bit about what Innovators Day is in the context of the overall EuroPCR conference. So Innovators Day has been a, a growing concept within the PACR program for the last two or three years and has very successfully brought together different communities uh, underpinning the innovation pipeline. So we're talking about clinicians, we're talking about innovators and engineers, but also importantly we're talking about medtech strategists and investors who uh, provide the financial support for this very important program of work. And two of the flagship meetings of the PCR family, PCR here in Paris and PCR London Valve uh, in London uh, later in the year, these groups come together to discuss and reflect on the latest progress. One thing that struck me over the years is how the nature of the kinds of innovation that we've talked about and have been presented at Innovators Day has changed. And let me point out two specific examples for this year. We had a panel on digital health and we had a keynote lecture on artificial intelligence in addition to the traditional clinical applications that we covered. Talk a little bit about how that reflects the changing nature of innovation within interventional cardiology. Well clearly the, the, the power of digital uh, media and the power of compu computing is extraordinary and I think it's beyond the imagination of most clinicians what could be achieved. And we particularly enjoyed these sessions uh, at this meeting uh, where we reflected on the power that these uh, solutions may have, not only to treat disease, but also to monitor health in individuals, but in wide scale populations as well. So we heard about a number of implantable or wearable devices that can monitor the cardiovascular system, for example. And we also learned how big data uh, can be used to monitor populations and provide direction for future research. It's interesting because we touched on a variety of clinical areas, different clinical applications. One area that didn't get as much focus as it might have gotten in the past is valves, but there's a specific reason for that because Innovators Day is not just an occurrence of Paris PCR, but as you alluded to, it's also part of London Valves. Talk a little bit about the London Valve meeting coming up. So London Valve is scheduled in September uh, 2018 and again will incorporate a program of innovation. As you've pointed out, we uh, didn't focus on valves specifically at this meeting so that we could leave the, the latest innovations for the program later in the year. But what I can tell you is that there is a still a, a huge pipeline of innovation uh, upcoming, particularly addressing the mitral and the tricuspid valve, where we, we don't have perfect solutions. We have many patients who aren't anatomically suitable for current devices and new solutions are required. We also need to make advances and progress in making the current solutions easier and more practical for more clinicians. And in that regard, the development of transeptal delivery of current devices is a major ongoing challenge. I thought an interesting aspect of Innovators Day was the presentations on scaffolds, specifically bioresorbables. As we know, bioresorbables have gone through some challenges recently, but the encouraging thing was that it was an area that still seems rife for innovation, people looking for new and different approaches, very early stage companies and, and startup companies that were making interesting presentations. What do you think that means for the continuing interests of the interventional cardiology community in the possibility of eventually developing a fully bioresorbable scaffold? So I think you make a very, very important point because to many uh, clinicians in their everyday practice, they may, they may be thinking that the scaffold story is dead in the water. So it was, I also was very interested to see the, the presentations that you describe, which were highlighting the continuing research and innovation pipeline in this area. Clearly lessons have been learnt from uh, the last few years where there has been some disappointing clinical results. 
but the engineers have clearly gone back to the drawing board. They're designing thinner uh, devices, for example. They're uh, designing devices with a higher radial strength. And clearly the presentations that we saw yesterday demonstrated that there's much to look forward to because there is undoubtedly still uh, a, a patient-led demand mm. for devices that will resorb and no longer remain in the body. And I think clinically, we're still seeing the challenges associated with prolonged antiplatelet therapy that isn't applicable or feasible in many, many patient groups. So it was very encouraging to see this, uh, this pipe stream still uh, healthy and to hear the latest data from researchers from around the world. You know, that is a perfect lead in to my final question, which is one can be only be struck by the global reach of the PCR meeting as a whole. And I think in that way, Innovators Day has become a microcosm of the larger meeting. We had companies presenting not only from Europe and the US, but from Asia. The attendance in the audience was global in mm. nature. What does that say to you about the global nature of innovation and of PCR, but also the overall health of the innovation landscape in interventional cardiology? Well, I, I think it's a testament to the health of the, the concepts within this meeting. It's a, a testament to the attraction of uh, the PCR uh, brand uh, and the way in which education and uh, medical innovation is, is uh, delivered and distributed to a very wide attendance. We're expecting 10,000 people at this meeting, for example. And I think, as you say, it highlights the point that innovation is very much a global activity, but that we are working in a smaller and smaller world where we were able to communicate our ideas and our developments in a very rapid fashion. And I should add that we've talked about Euro PCR in Paris, we've talked about London Valves, but obviously the PCR community extends worldwide to meetings in, in Asia as well. So again, that just supports what you had just said in, in terms of the overall global nature Absolutely. of of innovation generally and PCR specifically. Yeah, and thinking beyond the, the, the corners of the world that you've mentioned, there is also outreach, of course, into the Gulf, exactly. the Middle East, and into Africa itself. So everything is in a very healthy state. Terrific. Bernard, thanks again for all your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.